Okay, today I'm building a tile in Adobe Illustrator that I'm going to use as a background in my website. I've opened up Illustrator. To get started, I'm going to just choose File, New, and I'm going to call this, um, I usually call it like background tile or something that makes sense. This is one that I'm doing in 2017, so this is a different file. I'm going to set up the name that way. For profile, in the start screen I'm going to choose web because web is going to put me into pixels for measurement and RGB usually web safe RGB but my only choices here are CMYK or RGB CMYK is for print RGB is what I want um, it gives me a default size I don't really want the default size so I'm going to use the width to change this to 30 pixels and the height to also change that to 30 pixels whatever I make that I tile, uh, it's really helpful if it's a square and not an odd shape. So 30 by 30 pixels. Once I've got all that set up, I'm going to click OK. OK, so here's my document. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my layers panel so I can see what's there. Layer 1 I'm going to change to um, background. Doesn't matter if I don't write out the whole world word. I'll know what it is. So. Everything that goes onto this layer is going to be stuff, probably just plain um, rectangles, or well, squares full of color, because I like to keep my layers separate so that I can organize shapes and text and all the different things that I'm going to put into this document. So I've got my rectangle tool selected. If I hold down shift while I draw a rectangle, it doesn't matter, it's going to be background, but if I hold down shift while I draw it, I can constrain proportions and draw a perfect square. I'm going to take the stroke off of that by selecting the stroke chip in the toolbar, and I'm going to change out the color here by, I can either double click on it or I can, um, if I want to see all my colors at once, I can open my swatches panel and go to my favorite swatch library web which will show me all the color swatches that are web safe 256 colors um, and I can sample from here as well as the old trick of double clicking here making sure only web colors is checked and I can move the slider to wherever I think I want it to be so I can choose a color that way if I click OK. Um, whatever I have selected changes to the color that I just selected and the fill color is now set to that color I just selected. That's kind of bright so I'm going to see if this one is, yeah, not as bright. OK. So now what I'm going to do is open up my layers panel again and make a new layer. And I can just call this, I don't know, graphics elements Cheerios, it depends what I'm putting into here. If I don't want to mess up my background layer, like I don't want to be able to shift this out of position, I can always lock the layer. Very helpful. So I think today, and it's been a long week, so I'm feeling a little mad today. So I'm going to draw a mad face. To do that, I want to draw a perfect circle. I'm going to hold down shift draw a circle and I, yeah I know what you're saying oh, wait a second Lauren that's the same color as your background you can't even see that so I'm going to change out the fill color of that whoa that's kind of light needs to be more subtle ooh that's no nope okay better okay sort of I'm not really using the guides I can use my up and down arrows to kind of like move this into position or I can kind of nudge it there sometimes the smart guides will say hey you know you lined it up top to bottom uh, and left to right uh, but if I've got it anywhere with inside the edges of the artboard it's not really going to make a difference okay I'm going to deselect that grab my line segment tool um, make sure that's no color because I only want stroke color on this so I'm going to choose the same color that I chose for the background I'm going to hold down shift so I draw a straight line and that will work just fine I'm going to go back to my 
ellipse tool, drag that stroke color into the fill. Wow, that's weird. Okay, because it was selected. Okay, so I need to deselect that. Command D usually hey, Command D usually does that. Today, Command D is not working. So I'm just going to click anywhere my little line is not. Deselect. Take off the stroke. Only have fill. Grab the ellipse tool again. Hold down shift. Draw a circle. Um, rather than redraw another circle, I'm holding down option key. I'm going to click and drag. Those don't look terribly centered. I'm going to select both. Use my alignment tools to make sure they're lined top to bottom. And then I'm going to do something called object group. Keep them together. Okay, move them over slightly. So now I've got my my math face that I'm going to use as a background tile. So I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to save this. Just hit Command S to save it, to save my file, and I'll put it somewhere into my Creative Cloud files. Yay. So that saves the Illustrator file in case I want to go back in and edit it again. I need to save it for web. To do that, I go to File Menu. Go to, um, well, I have the option of save for web. Depending on which version of Illustrator you're using, you may have to go to export and choose save for web legacy. So either way, save for web. It'll save you a lot of time. So this is something that is really small. Um, wow, that's like 30%. 100%. Okay, so I don't want this to be a JPEG. I want it to take up less space. GIF image is fine for this because it's got no gradients in it. It's not a photograph. It's just a very simple graphic. So once I've got that done, I'm going to click Save. I'm going to give it a different name and call it um, and save that also into my Creative Cloud files and click Save. So now when I want to use that as my background tile, I need to upload it to my server first into my images folder, but I've got a GIF image.